Hey everybody, this is Pete. And in this video, I'm going to demonstrate a technique for creating a cleated belt like you see here. Had somebody reach out with a request on how to do that and it's actually easy to do, but there's a little trick that you would need to accomplish it well inside the design. So just to kind of give you frame of reference, this is what we'll be modeling. I'm going to start up a new part and I'll just work through it really quickly. It actually doesn't take terribly long, but it does involve creating a new sketch. And I'm gonna go ahead and use the center to center slot tool to design my belt. So I'm gonna have that go 24. We'll make it a three inch diameter. Perfect. And then we'll just make up a thickness here. We'll say, uh, I don't know, quarter inch. So that is the gist of making the belt portion. Now here's where it gets goofy. I'm going to create a cleat. I'll say it's 0.1875 and then we'll say it's three quarters of an inch tall. It's all about where you put it. So using the control right click technique, I can get my coincident constraint and I'm going to use the midpoint and you'll see why later. And then I'll go ahead and apply a dimension from this edge to the point and we'll say a one inch. So here's where it gets goofy. I'm going to do it wrong first then we'll do it correctly, quote unquote. Hit extrude, go ahead and extrude the belt. We'll say that's two inches centered. We'll apply that to save a little bit of time. And then we'll create the cleat. I'm gonna make it as a new solid in case I want to show it as a different part, etc. And we'll also make it symmetric. Cool. So in order to have it follow the path, I'm gonna reactivate the sketch. I mean, make it visible. And then I can use the rectangular pattern, which actually allows it to follow the path. So I'll pick the feature, pick my path, have it go the other direction, and we can already see it's goofy. I'll even switch it to two inches, try to have it do direction one, and you can see it's just, it's not working. <laughs> the problem is, is it's trying to define its relationship to the curve, but it's back here one inch. So to fix this, we're actually gonna have to put it right on the curve. So I'll cancel out of here and we'll edit our sketch. So within the sketch, because I always screw this up, yeah, make sure you get rid of this dimension. <laughs> it's a classic Pete move there. And we also don't necessarily want this to be coincident to the line. So I can delete that constraint as well. So we pull this up. A little bit there we go so the next thing that we can do is we can do a control right click coincident but we want to place this on the curve exactly where we want it so again the midpoint is a great position and I'm going to stick it right here so by doing this now and we can get rid of this guy too if that dots freaking you out you can just get rid of it by putting it right here in the middle, you'll see that when it goes around the curve, it's going to center the rectangle on the curve. So let's give it a shot with this new position. So we go ahead and launch the rectangle tool, pick my feature, pick my path, flip it around, and now, oh, so close. It's in the right spot. This is where you can hit this little double arrow and you can make sure you switch it to direction one. So that will work nicely. I mean, give it a shot. You wanna make sure that it's doing exactly what you want. And then of course you can set up the criteria for however you wish. So if I set it to the entire curve length and we'll say, I don't know, 30 of them. Now you can see that it's gonna put those all around at the orientation you want. So that's it. Go ahead and hit okay. You can turn the sketch on or off if you wish, but that would be a method for creating that cleated belt shape. I hope you have that, found that helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know and have a blessed day.